Welcome back to another episode of Harmonious at Lunch, the show that fuels your business success. I'm Brandon Gano, your host and guide through the world of harmonious business growth. Today, we're unlocking powerful strategies with industry experts to help your business thrive. If you're a business owner, entrepreneur, or executive, you are in the right place. Join me and our incredible guest today on the journey to clarity, growth, and success. It is time to revolutionize your approach to business. Let's dive in with another episode of Harmonious at Lunch. Welcome back. We got another episode of Bite Size Business Advice, and we are in the realm of marketing today. I think we're going to talk about Facebook ads and cost per acquisition and boring things. Sydney, am I am I on the right topic with that? <laughs> no, we're going to talk about organic marketing. Yes, we're going to talk about the fun side of marketing, the important stuff. We're going to make this interesting. And it's really about your brand messaging and how you build that brand, how you build the message around your brand and connect with your ideal clients in the most organic way. So uh, we will not mention Facebook ads. Maybe we will, maybe we won't, but that's not the purpose of this episode. But we have a, an amazing guest lined up um, and you've already heard from her once. So Sydney, before we go any further, let me welcome you formally to the show. Thank you for being here. Thanks so much for having me. Yeah, so I'm excited to dive in. So the topic that we put down here um, was the power of messaging for growing your business. So before we start unpacking that i always like to hear from your perspective how do you define and this is a stupid question but it's really good for context how do you define what the word messaging means in the context of this conversation yeah absolutely i uh well to give a little bit of a background i do a lot of copywriting work in my own business and work with brands and businesses for developing their messaging um I think of messaging when it comes to the business world a little bit in two categories. So there's brand messaging and then there's marketing messaging is sort of how my brain thinks about it. And I, I want to talk a little bit more about the brand messaging side because I think that's really relevant to this conversation. But your brand messaging encompasses how your brand speaks and describes what you do. It's really this if you if you've worked on the elements and pieces that encompass brand messaging it can become this internal guide that describes you know the the really core elements it's usually the about the mission your mission statement your vision statement and can include a tagline it can include um it should include like your brand bio um or your you know, sort of elevator pitch, so to speak. And um, depending on the business can be other elements. It could be like the founder story can be part of your brand messaging, um, you know, descriptions about your services or your products, um, and perhaps even some more internal messaging pieces like your target audience and who they are. So I think brand messaging is one of those really core foundational pieces for any business. And it helps you create things like your marketing messages. And the difference between marketing messaging is that it is created for a reader or customer to take action. So brand messaging is, um, it's more like internal and descriptive and it can be, certainly can be used in, in the vein of marketing. You know, you see like a mission statement on someone's website or you meet someone in the elevator and you're telling them what you do. Um, but when I think of marketing copy, copy marketing messaging, it's a little more actionable. So that's the two, the sort of two categories of messaging I think about in the umbrella of marketing. Yeah. Yeah. And first of all, thank you. That's why I asked that question, because most people, when we're talking about marketing, they they kind of do that stuff, but they also kind of assume it already exists. Like if you're if you're in business, you should have a mission statement, right? That's kind of like foundational. What I find is most people don't or they don't use it. It's just like pretty words on a wall. Mm -hmm. So I love that you start here. We actually separate the two as well. And everything you just discussed, we put in kind of the onboarding section of when we start working with people in our harmonious mm -hmm. architecture. For those of you listening, you know it's navigation because that's where that's where you get the map for where your company goes. So thank you for separating those two different types of messaging out in your own language and, and for context. So then the next question would be how many people, when you start working with them, really have that 
dialed in to the point that you're satisfied you can build brand messaging off of that? <laughs> Not a lot, because I <laughs> I do a lot of work helping people create their brand messaging. So they're they're usually coming to me to either start it from scratch or maybe they've done some pieces on their own um, and need help finessing it. And, um, you know, there, there's certainly you can create this on your own, but obviously I, you can work with a, a professional as well or a copywriter if you're feeling a little stuck, but it's definitely something that is going to make your life a lot easier when it comes to creating pieces of marketing content um creating your website copy creating like a pamphlet that you have to hand out at an event um creating your emails that you need to send to your audience so it's interesting that a lot of people when they're starting off don't always think about it if especially if it's if you're creating something for the first time um or maybe you're not as aware versed of like the these topics in in the marketing world but it, it's really important and it doesn't mean that you can't create it if you've already been running your business for a couple of years i definitely have have personally worked with business owners and brands where it's about like editing their brand messaging and oftentimes they they have something existing they maybe just don't know it because you have to talk about what you do and what you offer obviously to be in business but it's so helpful to then take it back and ask the questions, especially around like values and mission and intention um, and getting really precise with describing the impact you make or the thing that you're offering to the world. So it's, it's one of, like I I can't say it enough. It's a very foundational piece for building a business and a brand. Yeah, I, I agree. And it goes outside of marketing too, because it, it affects your operations. It affects the, the way you, the way you interact with your employees. I mean, depending on how you set this portion of your brand up, it's everything you stand by and you live for and you exist for. So this conversation is, yeah, more honed in on the marketing side of things, but just understand, like Sydney said, I mean, you have to build this piece of your business out because it will start to integrate into all those other areas. Um, so yeah, you, you couldn't be more spot on with that. Now, when you when you are working with people and you're developing this, you said the four key areas where where it kind of touches and and you work on with them. But when you're building it out, what's the process to kind of figure out who a company is really serving, um, what their product line or offering is? And the reason I'm asking is because I see a lot of people in the marketplace where they'll just keep it generic because they don't want to get overly specific or or maybe they don't even know who they serve and they'll say things like i'm uh we'll use a generic example i'm a business coach it's like okay but like what does that mean who do you serve what's the result they get so what is your process mm -hmm. to kind of figure that out with your clients yeah um and and my process might look different than others but i really love weaving in storytelling components into brand messaging because I think it creates a more human connection. Um, and I, I personally work with a lot of mid-sized to smaller businesses who are sort of in that early to growth stage. So I, I often find more, most times that um, infusing more of that founder story or the the why we were started and created is missing and is is really like a key piece of extrapolating those detailed messaging points of why we're different who we stand for um because if you're if you're in that stage of building a business and um depending on you know what you do more more often than not like your very your own story as a business owner um is very much integral to your business and why you created it. So I like to do my brand messaging sessions as a bit of an interview process. So I have, you know, some standard questions that I, I like to ask and get into it, but things like, uh, you know, first of all, getting out the story of how did you create this business and when did you decide this is something you want to do? And that could be, obviously that can be really long, but it's good to to flush it out and, and go through that process and kind of look back and at your own at your own trajectory and be like, when did this happen for me? Because oftentimes we create our businesses from a problem that we had or that we saw and were 
in our in our own lives, right? And had to had to find a solution for. Um, so that's that often becomes a big piece of certainly the founder story, but it also often becomes a big key in the the brand bio or the 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 transformation message of like what we do and how we make a difference because that was the core problem that you started with. And it's probably, I would assume, a big part of what you're continuing to do in how your business is serving people. So asking questions about how you got started or or really the why you decided you wanted to create this as a business is really helpful. Um, I do think it's helpful to ask questions and think about um, if you have customers already or if you've helped people and you're getting started to think about who they are. And I do think putting on, they're doing the the work of like a persona and thinking about who this ideal customer person is can be helpful to think about like, okay, what's their problem and what, what are we doing to solve them and putting in those key pieces into your messaging. But um, yeah, mostly I, I think it's really, I like to do it a little bit more interview style and that really helps me pull out the key differentiators because I think people, whether you're, you verbally process or you um, write things down to process, you'll start to see consistencies come out in, in what you're saying. And that often becomes those key differentiators that you want to put into your brand messaging. So, you know, you make, you might create a certain product and there's a lot of other people who create that type of product, but you'll start to see like how you describe why yours is different. And that might be in the way that you, the materials it's made from, or the way you go about making it or um, where people can access it. That's a very product related example, but I hope, I hope that makes a little bit more sense. Absolutely. Yeah. And I, I think it's, that's a really cool process because it's not just, it's not just sit down and fill out, you know, fill out a, a intake form of, when you started, what your name is, what products you are, you know, that's, I I think that's, it's harder to create a message around factual data than it is to, like you said, pull out stories and experiences and, and uncover the why, why the business exists, why the business owner started it. I like that process. So I'm curious, you talked about stories. I would Mm -hmm. love to hear if you're able to share, I understand, you know, you don't have to use client names or anything like that, company names, but are you able to share kind of transformation stories, one or two of clients you've worked with where you were able to hone in on their message where maybe it was even way different than they thought going into a session with you and where Mm -hmm. that took their brand and their company on the back end of working with you. Yeah. Okay. Let me think here. Um, Yeah. I put you on the spot with that one. So (laughs) take your time. (laughs) No, no worries. I'm um, going to think back on some clients. I'm going to try and think of a service provider and a product provide or a service-based business and a product-based business that I've worked with recently. Um, Okay. So one that's coming to mind is a a fitness brand, a a wellness brand, I should say. They um, offer cycling classes and and other workout classes. And this business owner had done a brand messaging exercise when she first opened her business, but had been in business for, I think it was about five years and just felt like they had grown and some of those key pieces didn't quite fit them. It didn't quite fit where she was wanting to take and evolve her brand and her business, which was more into like a holistic wellness space versus just being known for like spin cycling classes. Um, So I remember this was yeah, this is the beginning of last year. So about the same time last year that this this came out. But kind of what we found through the messaging part was that she was using, she and her instructors and her team were using a lot of language in their classes and in their business that weren't, that didn't live or exist in their brand messaging and therefore didn't it, it live or exist on like their website or maybe on their social media a little bit, because I feel like that's, that's updated more frequently, but it wasn't being translated to those marketing pieces. So um, yeah, so that was, that was one transformation that I saw is that in redoing her 
the sort of about the business and revisiting her her values, her business values even, and updating those and refining those, even things like her mission statement and vision statement or um, describing the services and even the names of the classes and the offerings. Um, some of them had slight tweaks. Some of them we created messaging brand new that hadn't existed before, but it felt so much more aligned with the way she was speaking internally with her team and how they were carrying out the the classes and the the things they were saying to people as they were coming in the door every day. So all of a sudden now we had this updated and elevated brand messaging piece. And then from there, you know, created website copy that then matched the way it, it was kind of like walking the talk, right? It, it, it felt elevated and aligned to the way they were speaking and just kind of just through certain phrases and things that she kept saying over and over as we were talking to each other um, just yeah, really helped pull out like the phrases we wanted to use in brand messaging. And I think the other transformation I would say, other than just rebranding and, and updating um, her business from sort of a visual and aesthetic and um, like even website perspective was that people started to notice it as well. They would comment like, oh, um, you know, her engagement on even social media uh, changed because they all of a sudden had all these new ideas for things to talk about and ways to to use this new messaging and create like a reel for it or go in depth and um, they created like a whole series of talking to um, different writers and people who came through their doors and so it just it sort of refreshed and reinvigorated the business for pieces of content they could create so I, I loved that um, it wasn't just like Yes, it was helpful in in creating consistency for how they're actually operating as a business, but it was also cool to see how people, how their audience then related to it. Um, a second example, I'll use a skincare company that I worked with, and this company makes natural lotions and soaps, um, and all of it is made far, fresh from their farm, and so when I started working with them, then this, again, this business has been around for, for many years, but got, was in this transition space of like, okay, we need to update our messaging. And they were also going through a process of updating their logo and their uh, other brand elements as well. So kind of an overhaul for everything. But from the messaging perspective, I would talk to the founder and um, it was she and her mom who started the business and asking them questions like, how did your mom even come up with these products in the first place 15 years ago? And why did people start using them? And why are they different? And why do they work? And why do people love using them on their on your skin? And I was like, all of these things are telling me I'm, I'm having a tough time finding them even on your website and product descriptions, other than these customer testimonials, like, great Google reviews, Facebook reviews, you know, reviews on the product pages, but it wasn't super, super clear on even their product pages on their website or their homepage, other than, you know, we make our products fr fresh from the farm. Um, here's what things smell like. Here's what it's made of. But I was like, we have to talk about how this can transform people's skin. And then even more so, I was like, this story of how you as your family created this business and are providing for not only your community, but you sell your stuff, you know, across the country in many different states, like that needs to live in your messaging too. I think that's something that people really want to connect with. They want to connect with the people behind it, especially for a business that's hand make, you know, so to speak, hand making things. Um, making things from their own farm. So that was really cool to infuse that in and update their messaging. And again, what what I saw happen is all these ideas for content started spurring out from it. All of a sudden we started creating monthly newsletters where they could talk about what's happening behind the scenes at the farm and people would respond to these emails. They get like hundreds of emails for every newsletter of, oh my God, I love seeing the story. I love seeing the goats. I love seeing more behind the scenes of how you make your products. Like I've been using them for years. So those sort of things that I think are really helpful internally for reinvigorating and re-energizing and again, helping you create pieces of marketing content. But um I also personally love the flip side of seeing if, how it's working and resonating with 
an audience. Yeah, that's so cool. And I, I love stories like that because it's, I, I think it's very common with small businesses. It, we get into business, we start our businesses because we're passionate about something or there's a problem in the marketplace with soaps and skincare lines that we want to see fixed. So we take it upon ourselves to fix it. And we want to be different. We want to change the world. And then what do we do? We copy everybody else and we use vanilla messaging. And it's like, we're a soap company. And then we need someone like you, Sydney, to come in and say, no, you're being an idiot because you're copying everybody else. Be you, be authentically you and be your brand and build a brand around why you started this thing. So that's, that's mm -hmm. at least what came through to me. Um, and mm -hmm. that's, we work with companies who are probably in the same size and, and scope of what, who you're working with. You know, these are, these are multi-million dollar companies and they have a lot of employees and they're looking to grow. Everybody falls into this trap. It's not just the small companies, the startups, the solopreneurs, it's across the board. And uh, Sydney, thank you for coming here and sharing your expertise on this. Um, I want to drop your website on the screen here. For those of you listening and not watching, it will also be in the show notes. Um, but I'm, I'm curious, what are we going to find on your website? Because you've given us so much information here. Um, why should we go to your website and, and check out what you're doing? Yeah, thank you so much for sharing that. So back label branding is where you can find me, like the back of a wine label, um, because that's how I got started in this world of messaging and marketing as I worked for a wine company back in the day and wrote the descriptions of the wine labels. Um, so you will find more copywriting and brand messaging tips on my website. I have a section called the marketing library where there's different categories that you can look at brand messaging, you can look at mar marketing ideas. And so that's a good place to just get a taste of my thoughts on a lot of organic marketing topics. And you can obviously find my social media handles there as well. And then I also share a monthly newsletter. Um, that's my preferred format, obviously, because I like to write, but I'll share marketing tips and ideas that I'm sort of seeing within my own business and with clients that uh, you will only get if you're on that email list. So those are two things that I think could definitely be valuable. And obviously, feel free to connect with me if you have any other questions about this kind of stuff. That's so awesome. Thank you for that. I, I'll be going over to join that email list because I got lost in Sydney's social media this morning in preparation for this episode. And she's a genius and a rock star. So I, I can only imagine what's on the newsletter, the monthly newsletter on her website. So Sydney, thank you again for being here. I, I really appreciate you coming. Thank you so much. It was really fun. For those of you listening, watching, make sure you're subscribed first and foremost. But I also want to know in the comments, what are you going to do with this information? Are you going to look at your the core of your brand, the mission, the messaging around that? What What is it about you and your company? Why are you different than your competition? Put it in the comments. Put it down below. We want to hear what you're going to do. Don't listen to these episodes if you're just going to passively listen. Make sure you take action to grow your business with this bite-sized business advice at lunch. We will see you on the next episode of Harmonious at Lunch. Thanks for listening.